Pink Speaks. Hey cuties! So today I wanted to discuss with you guys a Pink Speaks video on death and experiencing death for the first time. Situation that just came about right now in my life and I wanted to speak on it for you guys. First of all, I have never had somebody close to me pass away. Ever. I have had my dog pass away and some people will be like, oh my god, it's just a dog. But to me, like, my dog was my best friend. I saw my dog every day, like, I shared secrets with my dog. Like, I love my dog, like, more than anything at that time. And when she passed away, that was, like, my first loss, so to speak. Like, I didn't really know what to title this video, but she was my first loss. And I also dealt with the loss of Hogan, um, but I have never had a relative pass away. Um, I've been around death lots while being an embalmer and in the field of that, but never like somebody close to me. I had, when I was um, like four or five, um, my great uncle, like he was like a great, great uncle passed away. So at that time, like I didn't really know him. Like I was only like four and I had only seen him like once before. So that was like the only relative that passed away that was close to me. Um, another person that passed away that was close to me was my best friend's dad. But again, um, even though you're young, you can still experience death and have that pain and go through mourning. I'm not saying like young as in you don't have the feelings, but I was so young. I was um, 10, but I had never really talked to him. Um, I saw him a few times, but he wasn't close to me. Those are like the only deaths that were close, so to speak, but none of them were actually close until today. You guys have been absolutely blowing up Twitter and YouTube and Instagram and just everything in sending me, you know, get well wishes for my uncle. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's because I state this on the vlog channel, but uh, my uncle was really sick and he was in need of new lungs. He had a lung transplant, sorry, a double lung transplant um, some years ago and they were recently failing him and he was struggling and couldn't breathe and I went to see him in the hospital and I was so lucky that I was able to see him in the hospital and today, um, two hours ago actually, he passed away. And honestly, like, I'm kind of in shock a little bit. I don't really know how to react right now, like I guess I come down to it and I realize that it hasn't hit me yet, so to speak. I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, he passed away and that's extremely sad, but I just, I don't know how to feel because it's like the first time that I've ever had, like to me, it doesn't feel real at all. Death is different for everybody. Everybody mourns differently. Um, but right now it just does not feel real to me. Um, we will obviously be going to the funeral and probably then it'll kick in for me. Maybe it'll kick in for me in an hour or, you know, when I'm going to sleep tonight, you just never know. And there's nothing to be expected with death and coping with death. You can't expect anything. And right now it's just like, my heart is going out to my mom. Like that was her brother and he loved my mom and also like his immediate family, his wife, his kids, his grandkids, like I'm just like thinking about them constantly and just hoping and praying that he didn't, you know, suffer as he went. The nurses said that he didn't, but how do you really know? Like really, right? I mean, you have to be in that position and when he does pass away, you will never know if he was suffering in those last minutes or seconds or breaths. Right now I'm just sort of in a weird funk I, I don't know how to act or what to think and I'm just constantly thinking about family right now. It's really sad, like my uncle was an amazing person and he was always so happy and joking. And the good thing about this situation is that he knew he was going to pass away just because of his lungs and he had a double lung transplant. But because of that, he was able to sit down and talk with his family um, like a year ago or something and discuss like, death and how he was gonna die and what he wanted and he got to pick out things and get his funeral ready and just say like I want these people here or not. So I guess that's a little bit reassuring for my family and it wasn't just like 
oh my gosh, you know, Uncle Norbert just died. He was in the hospital and before that, like he, you know, he was struggling to live, like when he had the lung transplant. So they were, you know, kind of prepared for it. So even though it's extremely hard because people lost their husbands, their dads, their grandpas, their uncles, um, he was so many, you know, wore so many hats. Even though that is extremely hard to deal with, it does make it a little bit easier because it wasn't just like, you know, a slap in the face kind of thing. We were all prepared for it. It still, it, it sucks. It does. A death sucks when somebody that you love, somebody who you shared time with and, you know, you know, became so close with and they're gone. But you do have to remember that if you've dealt with a loss maybe recently, maybe a year ago, that their memory will live on and you have to keep that memory living on and their spirit and their soul will always be there. And even though their physical body still isn't here anymore, whatever you believe, if you believe that they went up to God, if you believe in a different God or anything like that, if you believe anything with religion, that's great and you should believe what you want, but you do have to realize that their spirit is still there and just like keeping the memory alive alive is very you know important he was struggling the past week he was you know in a lot of pain and couldn't breathe and had machines breathing for him and you know organs that were failing and just like kind of something new every hour and it was a hard time for everyone for everyone and I am lucky and not even lucky thankful. I am so thankful that I was able to see him. And even though he wasn't um, coherent, as in like he was sedated, I'm just so thankful that I was able to say goodbye and say, you know, like you're so strong and I love you. And, you know, being able to be there for him. I don't know if he heard me just because he was sedated. I don't know. And again, we'll never know. But I mean, just to be there and just have your presence there um, is amazing. And some people don't get that opportunity. And even though if you did, if you haven't had that opportunity to say goodbye, right now you can say goodbye. If they are passed away or if you're in a different state or province, our souls and our voices and our words and our minds are so strong and powerful. Giving love and, you know, thoughts are so powerful as well. So I didn't really know what kind of video this would be. I didn't really know what I would talk about. I didn't have anything planned. Um, my uncle just passed away, like I said, a few hours ago and I just heard about it and I just wanted to turn on the camera and give you guys like a video on loss and a loss that I very first experienced and again like I it hasn't hit me but I'm just so happy and thankful that I was able to, to see him he had people all around him he had so much love and you know yesterday actually something that was very amazing was um, well he would be sedated and then he would come out of the sedation uh, because they had a tube down his throat to help him breathe with his lungs and um, you can't keep somebody sedated for that long. So they had to, you know, sometimes remove the tube and wake him up to see if he could breathe on his own. And um, when he, that would happen, obviously he would be awake and aware of everything. There were times when they had to, you know, just put it back in and sedate him because he couldn't breathe. So when he was sedated yesterday, it was actually yesterday, last night, my mom and dad went to go see him. And when my mom um, was in there, it was his daughter and his wife that were there with my mom and dad. And they were all just like talking and, you know, talking to him and, you know, just being positive and everything. And my mom, my mom was there with him and she grabbed his hand. And at that point, because he had been in the hospital for about a week, he was getting stubble on his uh, chin. And my mom said, geez, Norbert, you need a shave. And um, his wife said, yeah, well, I did actually bring a razor today. And then my mom said, ah, let him keep it. It's Movember, right? And as soon as she said that, his eyes opened up like this. And then they went back because he's, you know, sedated. So he's really groggy. But everyone went, oh, like that. Oh my goodness. And then my auntie, his wife, said like, you know, say something again, like he's responding to you. And then his daughter said, wow, like he hasn't, you know, done that to anyone when he's been sedated. And my mom was just so shocked and she just like kept talking. She's like, yeah, Norma, keep your beard and just being so positive. And that's something that's also very key is positivity. And even though it's hard when you walk in there and seeing your loved one in a condition like that to just, you know, start crying and go, oh my gosh, poor guy, you know. If they can hear you, that's probably not good for them. I mean, I've never obviously been in that position, but if you're in that position and you're like sedated and you can barely, you can only hear a little bit and somebody's like, oh no, I'm crying at how you look because you can't really see how you look. 
how are you going to feel? Like, that's probably going to lower your spirits. But when my mom coming in there and being so positive and happy and, oh, you should shave and, you know, being so happy about it, that must, you know, lift his spirits and, you know, make him feel like, oh, you know, I can push through this or some hope. And then when my mom was talking again, he opened his eyes again and then went back. That night, actually at 3 a.m. this morning, um, that's when he was rapidly declining and his wife was told to come in and kind of like make a decision about his health and everything. And my mom was just so thankful she was able to see him last night. And it was last night that she decided to go there because she was going to go there tonight. And then she just said, you know, like, I need to go there tonight. And last night, sorry, and the nights are all like screwed up. But last night she went there. And now we say that he was saying goodbye to her or trying to like recognize she was there. It's really sad and... I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. He did have a good life. He had a great life. He watched his um, sons and daughters get married and have babies and, you know, play with his grandchildren and just be there for them and be an amazing uncle and husband and so funny and such a loyal hockey fan and just, you know, had so much life and love to work and love to give and love to make people laugh. And I'm just so thankful that he was able to have like a long, happy life. Um, I would have loved for it to be longer, but we don't choose when we go. And well, sometimes people do. You just never can expect anything with death. The, the thing that really is kind of, you know, making me upset and eating me up is two things, but two things in one. When he was in the hospital, the nurses said that his lungs, when um, you have a lung transplant, they don't last forever. The lungs will fail within three to five years. And it's been about that. But when they do fail, it's, you know, slowly, like it's progression, like he'll start to feel out of breath. And then, you know, he'll be really out of breath. And then he'll be on an oxygen tank that he'll carry around. And then, you know, it's all these steps and it's like kind of like a process. And then you go in the hospital and then you get another lung transplant if, you know, that is an option. Um, for him, it wasn't like that. He just, you know, was breathing perfectly. And then in a split second, he, you know, declined so rapidly. I don't want to give any details into that, but he just declined so rapidly that they were wondering, is it the lungs failing or is this like a bacterial infection? Does he have an infection? Does he have a virus? Like what is it? So they were running tests and all of them came back negative and he was waiting for some tests uh, last night, today, and tomorrow were his final test results to see what it was that was making him this way. And that's what's eating me up is what if it was something that could have been cured? Like it, maybe it wasn't his lungs. Maybe he had, they, maybe, they thought he had Norwalk virus. Okay, well, maybe that could have been cured. I don't know if Norwalk virus can be cured, but I'm pretty sure it can. But there's different viruses and infections that can be cured. So what if he had something that could be cured? But I know you cannot think like that. That is the wrong way to think um, because, you know, what is happening is now and you can't go in the past and change anything. But that's sort of just eating me up a little bit. And the fact that, um, I think it was yesterday or the day before, but he came out of sedation and he couldn't breathe at all. And he looked at the nurse and said, am I gonna die? And she looked at him and said, yes. And he, you know, said, can you please put the tube back in then? Cause he did not want to die. And that's something that, you know, is eating me up again because he wasn't ready. And when you're not ready, I mean, how grueling, like I just, it's, I, uh, I have goosebumps right now. And the last thing that I wanted to say is last night at like four, more like five, like 5 a.m. I jumped out of bed and I don't do that. Like when I'm sleeping, I don't do that. I always wake up like really slowly and I like jumped up like this. And I just came downstairs and was like, what the heck? Like, why am I jumping out of bed? Came downstairs, like went pee, let the dog out and went back upstairs and fell asleep. And when I came back upstairs, like Dalton was kind of awake and said like, what's wrong? I was like, I just had a really bad nightmare. And I forget, like I completely forget what the nightmare was about, but it was a, such a bad nightmare that I like jolted out of bed and and went back to sleep obviously and then we woke up at like 7 30. I woke up to having another nightmare and I just said to Dalton oh like I've been having nightmares all night and all morning long and right now like I have such a bad headache and I think it's from like jolting up and just like everything combined but my mom said that you know that could be 
why you were having your nightmares is because he was doing so badly last night and again the mind is so powerful and the thought train and just like the feelings that you can get are just so powerful in our human body. That's all really that I wanted to say and I just want to be able to come at you guys like a person I mean, even though I always do but I'm just you know a different kind of video like a sit down video I love doing these um, and sharing my experiences with you guys because you guys have similar experiences and some of you guys are dealing with this right now or have had or maybe will you, you just don't know and I want to you know share that with you guys and maybe make it easier I don't know how that would but sometimes just like listening to somebody or you know maybe feeling not alone if you're in that situation yeah I just wanted to say that I love you to my uncle Norbert and I am so happy and thankful that I was able to see such you know an amazing man and be able to experience an honor to be in the presence of such an amazing guy I just want to say thank you to everyone for you know listening to me because talking and getting it out even though you know I'm talking to strangers some strangers some people I know um, my fans my cuties the chomp squad just so many people um, just opening up can sometimes help and I journal a lot that helps a lot but sometimes just like coming here and sitting and talking with you guys helps a lot as well so thank you guys for listening to me and I'm sorry if this wasn't like an up uppity video but it kind of just happened thank you guys so much for watching and I guess it does make it a little bit easier because we were expecting it and you know like we were prepared for it so to speak but you can never be fully prepared but I will talk to you guys tomorrow obviously and thank you guys so much for watching I honestly truly appreciate it bye guys